I can't even hear it. Come on now. Y'all said we were too loud, so we turned down, and I can't hear y'all. So which one is it? <laughs> all right. So here we go. It's time to worship the Lord and offer it. Take your offering out. If you don't already put it in the back, put it in the back. If you already have it, hold it in your hand and hold it up. Let's say this together. I lift my offering to you. Let it please you, O oh Lord. This is my seed. Although it leaves my hand, it will never leave my life. You will multiply. Accept my seed, O oh Lord. Give all that hand clap and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the time and opportunity that we have to be in your house. And Father, we just pray that you would minister by it in each and every one of us. Father, help us, Lord God, to realize the time that we have here today. To leave all of our cares behind and just focus on you this morning, God. We just ask that you would minister by it as we do that. You see the needs. We just ask you to roll the burdens away with the touch of your hand, Lord God. We sure to keep you testifying.
Remain standing for the word. Look at somebody and tell them it's a good time to be in the house of the Lord. Tell them it's great to be in the house of the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see here. Get your Bible out, Isaiah chapter 6. I started talking about this uh, Tuesday night, but we didn't have a great big number here, and I want everybody to hear this. This is very important. This is so important. Also, I did it on Facebook Live. On Facebook Live on uh, 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 Wednesday night. Y'all, well, Facebook Live on Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, Building Lives for the Kingdom. You got your Bible, say amen. amen. You don't say on me. All right, everybody, y'all, y'all, mighty loud, I can't hear you. Okay, get your Bibles ready. Isaiah chapter 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon the throne high and lifted up. And his train filled the temple. Let's just stop right there for right now. That says, God, for a special touch and a special anointing. Father, we love you, Lord. We praise your name. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you, God, that you're alive and well and you're on the throne. And we thank you, God, that there's nothing, absolutely nothing, that you cannot do. I ask you right now, Lord, to touch and anoint, to have your will in your way. God, to move in our lives like only you can. Lord, we know, God, this day is yours. It's not ours. It's yours. This is the day that you have made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it today. Help us, God, to understand that you got everything in control. In the name of Jesus, we pray. The church said, Amen. 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 You be seated. I'll tell a story. There was a, a man who had been visiting a therapist because he had fear of monsters living under his bed. The man had been seeing the doctor for months, and every time he would come to the doctor, the doctor would ask, have you made any progress? And every time, the man would say no. So the man decided to go and see another doctor. When he went back to the other doctor and he asked, have you made any progress? He said, yes. I've done all better now. The doctor said, what happened? The man said, I went to another doctor, and he cured me in one session. The doctor's asking, well, what did he tell you to do? The man said, he just told me to cut the legs off. Of my bed. Amen? Amen? So today I want to cut some legs off some beds. Amen? Amen. Look at somebody that's never going to have some leg cutting going on. Amen. 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 Now, again, uh, this is probably one of the shakiest, hardest times in the history of the United States. We've had some hard times. We've had some rough times. We've had times when the nation was divided so badly that a civil war broke out that actually caused the division in the North and the South. And we thought that we would never see stuff like that again. But I'm here to tell you, it's here again. Amen. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm not going to sit here and just blow sunshine up everybody. I'm just going to tell you, it's here again. Never have I in my entire life seen the country so divided as it is today. So, and on both sides, there's good points. On both sides, there are bad points. So I'm not here to to argue points with you. I'm just here to tell you that the country is divided. And because the country is divided, somebody needs to stand up and say, hold on, calm down. Let's not get in such an uproar because we don't want to start another civil war. We want to let God be in control. Amen? Amen. When the North fought, the North said we got God on our side. The South fought, said we got God on our side. Well, God was on both sides. The problem was God was not allowed to be God. Right now, in this day and time we live in, we are not allowing God to be God. You can tell by the stuff our nation does, we are not allowing God to be God. Absolutely. Nobody can argue that point. Look at the Word of God. Look at our laws. You'll see there's so much that's not even biblical, not even godly, that we keep doing and keep allowing to be done. And so, so somebody somewhere needs to stand up, and it's not going to be the Republicans. 
It's not going to be the Democrats. It's not going to be Trump. It's not going to be Biden. The people that are going to stand up and bring peace at this time is the church. We're the ones. We're the ones that hold the keys in our hands. We're the ones that make the difference right now. Without us, honestly, without us speaking up, the world they tossed in such a bad turmoil that you would think that the end was coming, which is exactly what's going to happen when the rapture takes place. Now today I was going to talk about the rapture of the church as in the Old Testament. I was going to start doing a rapture uh, maybe once every so often do something about, a rap about the rapture that is coming. The purpose of the rapture is actually to remove the church out of the way so that, or the restraining force, which is we are the restraining force, the Holy Spirit embodied in God's church. We are the restraining force. And God has us here in order for us to make a difference, but we cannot stay silent and make a difference. We cannot be quiet and make a difference. We cannot argue amongst ourselves and make a difference. If we're going to make a difference, we need to get our act together, focus on God, His Word, and promote His Word, and then that will make the difference. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. This ain't about how I feel. This is about what does God say. Amen? This ain't about how you feel. This is about what does God say. Amen? So, so look at it that way. That's what I'm trying to do today is bring some civility. I want to talk about the rapture. I was getting excited about talking about being taken out of the way. But right now I'm going to talk about being put right smack in the middle of the way. Amen? It's time for us to stand up, not just lay back. You know, we got to get up and make a difference, okay? The church has to be the church, okay? That's what we were here for. We weren't here so we can have a Sunday service. We can all talk about what that great music, what that great preaching, and go home and do nothing. What to do is when you hear music, it's to inspire you. When you hear sermons, or to inspire you to go out and make a difference. This is seeds being planted. Every Sunday, these are seeds being planted, and they grow when you get outside of this door. And you either pass those seeds along so they grow even more, or they grow in you, and then you step outside, and you bloom and blossom. So it's very important right now. It's decision time. Here's the decision right now. And I'm going to ask you this plainly. You don't have to raise your hand. You don't have to say anything. Uh, amen will be nice, because let me know that we are listening, and you hear what I'm saying. Is God still on the throne? Oh, yeah. I know we're not messing with something. Oh, let me get, I'm going to get ahead of myself. I don't get ahead of myself. But my question today is, it's decision time. Is God still on the throne? If God is still on the throne, then guess what? It's all going to work out. That's right. Amen? It's going to work out according to God's plan. So let's just watch this now. Who's really in charge? Uh, who's calling the shots? I can promise you. I promise you. It's not the Republicans and it's not the Democrats. It's not in this divided nation that we got. God is still on the throne and he's calling the shots. Now, uh, if, you help, if you don't know how to get ready to say it, then you actually have been asleep now for several years. You're Rip Van Winkle. You just woke up and you go, wow, what in the world is happening? I want you to see that seesaw there is broken. Guess what? We just came through a tumultuous election. Tumultuous. And I can tell you, whether you believe it or not, whether you want to say it or not, both sides have blood on their hands. Both sides acted a whole lot like children. Both sides, I honestly was ashamed to say some of the stuff that suddenly be up there leading us is acting like kids. Both sides, not one side, both sides. I saw more of this. I'm thinking you're supposed to be representing the people. You're supposed to be helping us get out of our mess, like making it bigger by being up there throwing temper tantrums. Both sides have blood on their hands. Okay, so now. Between COVID and this election, which honestly, this election made it even worse at the top. Our nation's values and our nation's faith has been shaken to the core. Amen? Amen. So now, we watch what's going on here. We see what's happening around us. And you know what? Again, 
We just see constant, even in families, you might have two people in a family and one is one side, one is the other, and there's constant turmoil. They can't even go to family gatherings together because of their difference in political views. That shouldn't be that way. Amen? Right, so, so, so here we go. Let's, let's watch this now. Let's listen carefully because this, this is not what I wanted to preach today, but I really believe that, that this needs to be coming out. Now, okay, I believe this really needs to be addressed. Last week, or this week actually, but last week marked the beginning of a new administration. It happens every four years. It's not a big surprise. And another big surprise is it don't always stay on one side or the other. Usually it's on one side for a while, then it's on the other side for a while, then the midterms come and things start changing, there's a realigning, there's all kinds of stuff. This has been happening, I'm 60 years old, this has happened as long as I can remember in my short 60 years. Okay? So, so listen carefully, listen carefully what careful I'm about to say. No matter which party would have won, you got to remember this when you go to work tomorrow. Because I guarantee there's people in your work that won't even talk to you because of your views. Amen? There's people that treat you differently because they don't like your views. And that's not the way it should be. We're humans. We are God's children. We should be able to talk. We should be able to do this without having a civil war. Okay? So now, no matter which party would have won, for some, this is a great day. For others, it's a bad day. I'm not here pushing either party. I'm not here for that. I've got my own political views, but I'm not talking about political views right now. I'm trying to talk about the Word of God and how to settle our differences. Alright? So if you want my views, just come see me later on. But this is not up here for my views. This is the Word of God. Ready? Let's watch. So, so no matter what, what the large party would have won, I guarantee you today, half the nation would be happy, half the nation would be sad. Don't matter. Put Trump back in and leave Biden out. Half the nation would be happy, half the nation would be sad. It don't matter. Okay? So, because of that, we have to understand the, the mechanics of all this. And just remember, I, I was thinking back. Remember four years ago? <coughs> colleges were shutting down. They were having to have classes for some of their liberal students because they couldn't believe that Trump was in office. Remember that? Do you remember that there was people actually four years ago having all types of emotional crises? So, I mean, this stuff was, this isn't new. What's happening now is not new. It's going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. And the only answer is us. We're the answer. Okay? Now, because we're the answer, remember, we do, listen, it's not my point of view. It's God's point of view that matters. God's point of view that matters. So, so look, we don't have to go there. We don't have to be getting some kind of emotional uh, crises because of who's in charge. We don't have to go in all kinds of trouble, it's going to be okay. Look at somebody say, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. So now, so now here we go. I'm going to do this real quickly, and, and hopefully it will bring some continuity to your methodology of informing people or even being, trying to be the church. Okay? So now, so this is down. Ready? Here we go. There's God on his throne. That's an awesome thing. Biden will never sit there. Trump will never sit there. That's right. One more time. It's God's throne. That's right. Trump will never sit there. Biden will never sit there. Those that are around the 12 around the throne or the 12, or 12 apostles around the throne are not Republicans and Democrats. They're Christians. Amen. Okay. So now, so now watch this. Ready? Ready? And then we're going to be around there too. So watch this. In the, king that, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon the throne, high and lifted up. And his train filled the temple, and above it stood seraphims. Each one had six wings. But twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole Lord is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one flew the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, 
which he had taken with tongs from off the altar, and he laid it upon his mouth, and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thy iniquity is taken away, and thy sin is purged. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. Isaiah chapter 6. Now I want just to dig into this for a little while. Because I was asking God after the election and all the stuff that was leading up to I saw it. And y'all saw it too. I saw the pressure building. We know the pressure's building because of all the riots and the looting. And of all the other stuff, the, 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 the storm in the Capitol, all that stuff. Black, white, red, and yellow. Nobody's, nobody's hands do not, there's nobody without blood on their hands. No sign. Okay? No sign. Okay. So, so I see all this is because it's a pressure cooker. And the pressure cooker's not being addressed in the proper way. We're treating symptoms, like I said last week. We're treating symptoms instead of the disease. And the disease is being pushed further and further and further away. You cannot treat cancer with a Band-Aid. You have to treat cancer by cutting it out. Amen? Amen. So, so, so here we go. Get ready. In the, king that, in the year that King Uzziah died, he had been king for 52 years. Because of him, the military was at its height. The economy was at its height. I'm not, not, that's not Trump. That's Uzziah. I'm not talking about Trump. I'm talking about Uzziah back in that day. Got me? Yeah. Okay. The military was at its greatest. The economy was at its greatest. All kinds of things were going. But Uzziah got the big head. And because he got the big head, God struck him down. He got leprosy. Still, everything was going good. For 52 years, some great things were going. So look. Once he died, everything they knew ended. Sound like now? And I'm not talking Republican, Democrat. I'm not talking about uh, political issues. I'm talking about just playing out, flat out. Can't hide it. Can't put it, put it under the under the porch. Everything that they knew was gone. Because he died. And now to begin was the unknown. Every four years, what we knew is gone. Every four years. Unless you have a man reelected, every four years, what you know ends. And what you do not know begins. Amen? I'm getting quiet on me. Amen. Every four years. So the cycle never stops. If a Republican gets in next time, it's going to be for the Democrats. The known is ended. The unknown is coming. The cycle is going to keep on going. For the Republicans, they go, wow, I've got Republicans in office, but you know what? Even with him, the known is ended. The beginning is unknown. Because you never know what's going to come down the pike and how other nations are going to be trying to inter intercept us. So in the, king, in the year King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord. God had got Isaiah. Isaiah is in distress. The nation's in distress. Because the known had ended and the unknown was upon them. And they weren't sure where they were going. And so God said, come on Isaiah, you're my prophet. You need to let the people know because they're not going to know if you don't let them know. You're the church and the world will not know if we don't tell them. That's right. Listen carefully. The world will not know if we do not tell them. Okay? Isaiah needed to refocus. I believe right now the nation needs to refocus. We need to pull together our resources instead of fighting each other, pull together and start working this stuff out. So, so now watch this. Here's the refocus. I also, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne. Uzziah's dead. He, he, he's gone. Okay? He, 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 he's buried. He said, but I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne. High and lifted up, meaning he couldn't get any higher. He was lifted up, meaning everything around him was pointing to him. And pushing him and promoting him. And his train filled the temple. I remember when Princess Diana got married and she walked in that cathedral 
And she had all the how many women holding her train as she went walking down that aisle. Remember that? Can you imagine God setting him like the other kings and instead of having two or three pages behind him carrying it, instead it filled the whole place up with his train. Wow. God said, you need to get a refocus. Right now our nation needs a refocus. Our nation needs to quit. Quit pulling off band-aids and showing the wounds and pulling them back up and go, your fault, your fault, your fault, and say, God, here's all our wounds. We need you to heal them. That's what he said. He said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and they pray and they turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. Wow. Quit fighting and let's go to God. Amen. So, so, of course, I know this might not be what you came to hear this morning. It ain't what I came to preach this morning to start with. God gave it to me. I finished it yesterday. Ready? Here we go. Here we go. What's that again you see up there? The throne. Let's talk for a minute. All the leaders of the world, United States, Canada, Mexico, England, Russia, I got, I got mixed up on Tuesday night and I wrote down, I got the right so bad, I wrote down Australia and when I went back, I called it back, I called it Asia. <laughs> I can't read my own writing. <laughs> Amen. <Well. laughs> All the leaders of the world, here they are, every last one of them, every last one of them, even Putin, they hold office. Won't you listen? They hold office. Not a throne. They hold office. They're either elected, battled their way there, or they're born there. Okay? Watch this now. They have a very limited seat. They have a starting point, and they have a stopping point. I've yet to see anybody in power. Okay, a hundred years after that person took power, do you think they're still there? I don't have to see anybody live a hundred years after they took power. It's limited. Okay. It's limited seat, starting point, starting point, limited power because it's just a small area that they have any say so over, and a limited ability because they only have so many resources. And right now, the whole world is fighting over leaders that are holding office, elected, battled or born into it. They're not going to be here for so many years. They're not going to be here for so long. They're going to have a limited power, the jurisdiction, and they're going to have a limited ability, resources. Watch this. The great God Jehovah. He sits on the throne. He's not holding office. He sits on the throne. And listen to this. He isn't elected, battled, or born. He's always, always been on his throne. And the, 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 the seat, he will always, it's not a starting point and a stopping point, he will always be on his throne. His power is unlimited. He, he it controls the entire universe and universes and universes and universes and universes. He's, going, he's seen way beyond what the, the Hubble telescope can see. He's seen way beyond what any satellite can see that's gone out into space. Why? Because he had his resources. He's all seen. He's all knowing. He's all powerful. He's everywhere at all times. He's in your past, your present, your future at the same time. Do you think that it upset him when Trump lost the election and Biden was put? Do you think it upset him? He went, that's not what I had planned. Because at the same time, he can go back to the very beginning of the United States, to the very end of the United States, to this election. And he's at all places at one time. He looks at it all. And he goes, so, so, so because of that, because he's there, and because he has that ability, get ready, here we go. Something special, believe it or not, is getting ready to happen. But let's just talk a little bit more about him. Ready? God, look, God is still, here he is, God is still on the throne. Amen? 
He's not up in heaven pacing, wondering how in the world can the, 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 the Republicans and the Democrats, you know, it's kind of like, you know, uh, 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 you're trying to figure out, was God a Republican or is he a Democrat? Really? It's kind of like, well, I remember talking about this, the, the, the white preacher and the black preacher riding down the road. They've been friends for years. And their only argument being was whether God was white or black. They're on the way to a convention. On the way to this convention, they get in a car wreck and they killed it at the same time. They're standing at the pearly gates. They go in and say, wow, we both made it. And they said, isn't it awesome? And then one guy looked at the other and said, you know what? Now we get an answer. You say he's white, I say he's white. We'll find out. Let's look for the throne room. And they see the angels and all the pomp and circumstance. That's got to be the throne room. And they walk around and they see God coming this way. And they said, now we'll find if he's black and white. When, when God come around, he went, wait, it's this, senors. <laughs> God is not Republican. God is not Democrat. God is in control. God is God. He's on the throne. He's never going to relinquish his power. Amen. God is God. Amen. Amen. He's not trying to figure out what to do. That's why I say we have the answer and we're the ones that's going to be bringing it out. That's why they try to shut the churches down because they know that we have the answer. Amen. I'm not a robot. The Republicans don't tell me what to do. The Democrats don't tell me what to do. God tells me how to live my life. Amen. 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 So, God's still on the throne. Not just still on the throne. He is sovereign over all things. He says, remember, I love this, remember the former things of old, for I am God, there is none else. I am God, there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that, that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand I will do all my pleasure. Let's just read this in, a, in another version. I like this, 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 this other version, the, the message. Remember your history, your long and rich history. I am God, the only God you've ever had and will ever have. I'm incomparable, irreplaceable. From the very beginning, tell you what the ending will be. All along, letting you in on what is going to happen, assuring you that I'm in this for the long haul. I'll do exactly what I've set out to do. Isaiah 46, 19. You need to give the Lord, Lord a hand clap on that one. Praise God. Give him a hand clap. God's got this. God's got this. God's got this. So, so here we go. Now, now here, here's one of my favorite scriptures. This came to me. This came to me uh, the night of the election. Or the, let's say the month of the election. Ready? Daniel 2.21, he changes the times and the seasons. He removes kings and he raises them up. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. Wow. Wow. Kind of puts things in perspective, doesn't it? It kind of helps me to know that God's in this for the long haul. God's got this. God already told us that the world is going to come into the one world system. There's going to be a great disease. There's going to be all kinds of calamities. They're all going to come together and become a one world government. He's already told us that. We did not know exactly. We thought the sickle was going to come down and the communists were going to take over. No. It's amazing what the launching pad is right now. COVID-19. Last year, or maybe now two years ago, if I'd have walked in the bank like this, they called the law. Now, I did walk in, uh, I went yesterday to a Chinese restaurant in Washington, took Anna and Emory, and they had a rich sign saying, No mask, no service. Please. Wear your mask, no mask, no service. And I'm, I'm very skilled in my Spanish. And it said, por favor, mascara. So I walked up to the lady and I said, well, my granddaughters are wearing it, but I'm not. Can I still be served? And she said, excuse me, I said, I don't have any mascara on. I was like 
that business, I said, no mascara. <laughs> and she goes, no sense. <laughs> Watch this. He changes the times and the seasons. He removes kings and set up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to them that no understanding. His ways are high above our ways and everything God allows moves history along to his prophesied end. That is King James Version. That's King James. That's the one Paul preached out of. Ready? God allows, what God allows, everything God allows moves history along to the prophesied end. Wow, let's just read another version of that. Blessed be the name of God forever and ever. He knows all, does all. He changes the seasons and guides history. He raises up kings and also brings them down. He provides both intelligence and discernment. He opens up the depths till secrets sees in dark. Light spills out of him. Wow. That's some awesome stuff. Knowing this, honestly, every time I hear something going on, it gets me, gets, gets me, gets me, gets me evil. And have to stop. I told you I turn the news off and don't even listen to it anymore. Uh, when I do listen to it, it automatically within five minutes of turning on the news, I'm ready to go fight somebody. Amen. So I just turned it off and listened to it in bits and pieces. I used to be a news hound. I'm not a news hound anymore. Okay? I just get bits and pieces because if I try to listen to it all the time, it'll make me so angry. Period. Blood on both sides makes me furious. We're better than this. Our nation is better than this. Our forefathers made sure that we would be better than this. And we have let, allowed corruption to take what was awesome right. and make something penny any over. And it's aggravating to no end. But so I have to get a refocus. Every time I turn on the news, I've got to stop and get a refocus. Wait a minute, God's on the throne. God still got this. God raises up kings and sets them down. He changes the seasons. He's got this. <sighs> God is in there. That's right. So look, I love this. El Shaddai, El Shaddai, God our strength. And in Him, the victory is won. It is finished. It is done. Yahweh is the Lord. In Him, we have overcome. Ready? Watch this. I'm almost through. I'm just about through. I wrote a lot of this down so you can see it. And if you want outlines, I'll put some outlines from the other week out there. And I'll put some outlines from this also out there so you can have all these, all these PowerPoints. Watch this. Whether, listen to me, look, 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 perhaps God wants Americans, listen to me carefully, Americans. We're all Americans, aren't we? We can't say that. Oh, yeah. Perhaps God wants us American Christians to put our trust solely in God rather than our comfort and safety. Usually what happens to a marriage when it starts falling to pieces is we start taking each other for granted. When you start having problems on your job, a lot of times you start taking each other for granted. Communication shuts down. When things get going good, then we just kind of start taking things haphazardly well, you know what? Judging by what's going on in this world today, we've taken God haphazardly. We've kind of put him on the back shelf. And God says, I want you to know something. It's time for you to put me back on the front. I want to get back on the front burner. And if I don't get back on the front burner, you know what's getting ready to happen. Good, bad, or ugly. Whether Republican or Democrats in the White House, it does not matter. If we don't get God back on the throne, we got a problem. Period. 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 It's time for us to realize. Watch this. He's enough. Actually, he's more than enough. Genesis 17 and 1 and 2. When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared unto him and said, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. I will confirm my covenant between me and you will greatly increase your numbers. Now watch this. That Hebrew word, God Almighty, is El Shaddai. The God who is more than enough, more than sufficient. It means he has the power to complete his promises and blessings and prosperity. Everything God does is over the top, more than enough, a surplus, super abundant, overflowing, good measure, pressed down, shaken over, shaken together, 
running over. God's got this. But he wants to be put back in. He wants, he wants to be our focus. Amen. The seasons are changing. Are you ready? Oh, yeah. Again, I get, you know, I get tired of hearing people say, well, now 2020 is over. We're going to be all right. No. Again, 2020 was a down payment. It's time for the church to flourish. We can really flourish now. We can really do something special now because we have the answer. But the seasons are changing. Are you ready? The way you get ready is not hiding your head in the sand. It's not acting like everything's going to be, well, 2020 is over and everything's going to be fine. No. God wants to bless us. God wants to anoint us. God wants to use us more than ever. But he can't use us if we don't get our focus back on him. Amen? When your focus is back on him, then you can love your enemies. When your focus is back on him, then you can reach down in the ditch and pick up somebody that you would never pick up before. When you got your focus on him, you can love the unlovable. When you got your focus on him, you can go and pick the detention center, even after somebody just urinated through a door and got all over your feet and said, will you pray for me? Seasons are changing. Are you ready? Watch this. Whatever we may face in the coming years, remember this God's allowing it. He is. God is allowing this. Whatever's happening now, God is allowing it. This division in our country, God is allowing it. Perhaps the church itself was going to face strong persecution. Perhaps the world was going to get, well, not perhaps, yes, the world's going to get worse. Okay? But just remember this, as the world gets worse, our light will shine brighter. Amen? You can't be afraid. You can't be afraid. You can't hide your head in the sand. Now is the time for us to learn God's word. Quit getting pity paddle over a Mickey Mouse mess and go ahead and get down to business and let God be God. Get your eyes on the throne. Not on people. Get your eyes on God. Get your eyes on the throne. Because now, now is the time for us to shine. Now if ever... Do you, you, you think it was easy living in, in Jesus' time with the Roman Empire in charge? They could kill you on the street and get away with it. But Jesus says that if your enemy... Or somebody tells you, compels you to, compels you to tote their load a mile, you take it two miles. Wait a minute, compel. What's that word compel means? That word compel means literally it means to put you in service, in Roman service. That word compel. Well, what he was saying is if it was with Roman soldiers, they could take their load no matter how big their pack was. When they got tired of taking their pack, they could go up by any Jew, any Jew, drop their load at their feet and say, take it for a mile. You could not. Could not say no. Because you were compelled into service. Now you're part of the service and you're under that soldier and you had to take it for a mile. So what they did was they couldn't, the little children couldn't do anything about it. So they taught everybody how, how to walk off a mile. So when you got to the end of the mile, you could just drop the load and say, okay, I've done my duty. And Jesus says, we're going to show them something different. When they tell you to take it for a mile, you take it two miles. You show them something a whole lot different. Well, the world's ready to see something a whole lot different out of us. Some awesome stuff. Some powerful stuff. Awesome, awesome stuff. We need to be getting our eyes on the throne more than ever. More than ever. So get ready. I'm almost through. Almost. We've only got 20 more slides. Get ready. And this is what I was going to talk about this week. Next week I will be talking about unless the Lord changes my mind again. I'm going to talk about pictures. I'm going, to talk, I'm going to start talking about pictures of the rapture throughout the Bible. And the very first one I'm going to talk about is from the Old Testament. I was going to do it today. I'll do it next week. Perhaps the Lord will come and take his bride home. And we'll finally be raptured out of this corrupt world. You know how to catch monkeys?
so they can eat them and or catch them for amusement. They have a trap, a box, and in this box, the hole is big enough for the monkey to stick his hand in and out with ease. But if he makes a fist, he can't get out of the box. And so they find something that alerts him, and they put it in that box. And the monkey reaches in and grabs it, and then he won't let go of it. And so when his people come to get him, he can't get away because he won't let go of what he prized in that box. I'm asking you now to release your grip. What's coming is going to blow you away for good and bad. You're not going to believe the bad that you get ready to see. But at the same time, you will, if you'll let go, you won't believe the good that you'll see also because we have the answer. Amen? So now, get ready. Like I told you, I'm only 24. Get ready. Whatever lies ahead, we must trust Christ alone more than, more than ever before. His children, this is we can sit quietly in His presence. We can be at peace no matter what happens. The great I Am is in control of whatever is going on. One up here, guys. Let me play something. Let me ask you a question again. Who's really in charge? Who's calling the shots? Satan would have the church just to eat itself up. Keep us with our hand. You know, there's this woman. This woman had a face that had been passed down her family for hundreds of years. This face was priceless. Mother had passed it down to mother, to mother, to mother. Four or five generations is a priceless vase. One day, a toddler come along and got his hand, his arm stuck in the vase. They tried their best to get his arm out. He's screaming, he's hollering. They tried soap, they tried everything to get his arm out of that vase. He screamed the louder, even more louder. Now his arms start to swell. He's crying himself out, trying to get out of there. So finally they did what they didn't really want to do. They have priceless, irreplaceable vase. They broke it. Get his hand out. When they got his hand out, it was like this. What was he holding? A pen. If he let go of that pen, what was priceless could continue. focus on the throne. Quit holding on to pennies. Every day, I see it. I can't even hold it. Wherever we went. Now we got to stop the church and everything. We can't find no pennies. <laughs> Every day, it seems like I spend my time, many times, getting people to get the penny out of their hand so they can flourish in God. <coughs> Today, there it is. Everybody can get back settled down until I find my penny.
That pity can be attitudes. That pity can be opinions. That pity can be things that honestly, 10 years from now, you'll look back and say, really? I held that penny in my hand and let the face break? I let the priceless break because I was holding a penny? You might not see it now, but it will be. Focus. Focus. Not on people. Remember when we come in here, Father is the most too important. I mean, of course, that was on the other sheet. Two most important hours of my week. Help me to focus on you. I'm here to worship, not be entertained. Is it perfect? No. Is it going to make everybody happy? No. But who do you want it to make happy the most? Yeah. When you go to work tomorrow, you may not like everything that happens at work. Let me ask you a question. Do you think if God raises up kings and sets them down, He didn't put you at your work for a purpose? So you can make a difference in people's lives. But you can't make a difference in their lives. If you hold on to a penny. Everybody stand.
Tuesday nights, we're talking about how to stand. And this week, we're going to be talking about standing high. The first part of standing, and it's going to be last week, was very, very awesome. Uh, matter of fact, I think it's probably one of the deepest we've ever had on Tuesday nights, ever. Uh, and it was a lot of work, a lot, a lot of work. Come on, I challenge you. Come on out. We don't, we don't record them like we do this stuff, so you can't watch it again. I do have outlines. Uh, you can get an outline, but again, and I also got, I'll make some outlines. Anybody want an outline from the day like I did with the other, with, a, with some outlines, I can give them to you. Uh, I'll put them out there on the, on the thing. Ready? God's got this. God's got this. Brother Dudley, can you dismiss us from prayer, please?